تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سورة الفاتحة is a very significant surah and it's intimately tied with our salah The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentions لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب There is no salah for the one that doesn't recite سورة الفاتحة And this surah is also a dua but not just any dua it is the greatest and most obligatory dua there is no narrated dua that we recite a minimum of 17 times a day in every rak'ah of every obligatory salah now i want to mention a point here my brothers and sisters this surah that we read so often should we not understand it and should we not strive to know its meaning and more generally the whole quran this book that was revealed as a guidance and salvation for us is there any other book on the face of the earth that is recited and memorized like the Qur'an and yet so many people don't know what it means. Now this is a point of reflection for us my dear brothers and sisters. Perhaps with the tawfiq of Allah this will give us the motivation we need to begin on this journey of tafsir, learning the Qur'an and understanding it so we can benefit ourselves and others. May Allah increase us in knowledge. Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I have divided the prayer between myself and my servant into two halves and my servant will have what he asked for. And you'll come to see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions prayer, he's referring to Al-Fatiha. Allah says, when the servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, my servant has praised me. And when the servant says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says, my servant has exalted me. And when the servant says, Maliki Yawm din Allah says, my servant has glorified me. And when the servant says, Iyya ka na'budu wa iyya ka nasta'een, Allah says, this is between me and my servant and my servant will have what he asked for. Now here's an important point, my dear brothers and sisters. We mentioned that this surah is a dua. And look at how it begins. It begins with the praising and exalting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important etiquette when it comes to making dua. We shouldn't just rush into our duas and ask Allah. Rather, use the beautiful names and attributes of Allah. Mention the blessings and the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on you. The guidance, the mercy, and so on and so forth. This is how we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith continues and Allah says, When the servant says, اِهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Allah says, this is for my servant and my servant will have what he asked for. These last two ayahs are the ayahs that I want to really focus on here. What are we asking for? We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. And this is why this is the greatest dua. You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon you the greatest blessing of his. The blessing without which there is no other blessing. What do I mean by that? Take for example a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed with intellect, eyesight, hearing. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't given him any guidance, what is he going to use these faculties for except to earn sin and end up in hellfire and maybe even take others along with him? May Allah protect us from that. Allah says, Wallahu yahdi man yasha'u ila siratul mustaqim. And Allah guides whomever he wishes to the straight path. And this is why we say إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ We ask Allah alone to guide us. But what does it mean? What does إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ mean? Sheikh Sa'di rahimahullah says it means O oh Lord, teach us and inspire us and grant us success on the straight path. So when we say إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ we're asking for two things. Firstly, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what the straight path is, to teach us what the truth is so we can distinguish between right and wrong. And secondly, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us and assist us and give us tawfiq to stay in upon this straight path. Because one may know what the straight path is and yet still not follow it. So, in the simplest of terms, when we say Idina Sirat al Mustaqim, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. And the ayah continues Sirat al Ladina and Amta alayhim, the path of those whom you've bestowed your favor upon. Who are they? They are the messengers, the steadfast affirms of truth, the martyrs, and the righteous. And excellent are they as companions in Jannah. So we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us beneficial knowledge and righteous actions and guide us like he guided this special group of people. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from being like who? غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. And not the path of those who have earned your anger or those who have gone astray. The scholars have said these two groups are the Jews and the Christians. The first group are the Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them knowledge but they didn't act upon it. Like the Jews of al Medina, they knew the Prophet was the Prophet of truth and rather than following him, 
they decided to make the path difficult for him and challenge him and fight him and even try to kill him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah regarding the Jews and he said, They were entrusted with the Torah, but they failed to fulfill its obligations. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likened them to donkeys that carry books. What is a donkey going to benefit from all these books on its back? Rather than acting upon this knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, they decided to conceal it and change it. So they earned the wrath of Allah and the anger of Allah. The second group are a group of people who acted without knowledge. And some may say they even came with love and sincerity. But their ignorance caused them to worship partners with Allah and commit shirk and fall into innovations and desires and they went astray. What is so special about these two groups? The Prophet ﷺ mentions a hadith and he says, You will follow the path of those who came before you, step by step, inch by inch, so much so that if they were to enter the hole of a lizard, you will also enter it. And the Sahaba then mentioned and said, Are you referring to the Jews and Christians or Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Who else? So this is a very important point, my dear brothers and sisters. These two groups that came before us, they were sent a prophet, just like we were sent a prophet. And they were given books, just like we were given books. And yet they still went astray. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ is warning us. And this is why this dua is so important. And we make it a minimum of 17 times a day. We're vulnerable to falling into the same things that they fell into. So when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be conscious. We need to understand this dua and what we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and what we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from. We are desperately in need of this dua. Think about how lost you are without this hidayah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين I'll see you in the next episode of Quranic Supplications السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خيرا brothers and sisters for watching may Allah bless you all please leave a like comment down below and subscribe and share this video so that we can all be part of the Quranic revival السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته